Hello and welcome to episode three, I believe, of the Upper Room series. Um, we're going to carry on today um, looking at the time, thinking about really more, the time that the disciples spent in the Upper Room waiting for the Holy Spirit. And um, we're going to look at, I mean, our topic today is sort out your stuff. Um, and it's quite a, um, I would say, we're going to go for quite a strong view on this today. Um, I believe there are two types of people in the world. There are keepers and there are throwawayers. And I am firmly in the throwaway camp. I recently had a birthday and I got lots of lovely cards and they were up for a week. And then um, I took them down off the shelf. I looked through them. I saw if there were any like, really sentimental messages or something that I really wanted to keep. If there were, I tore that out and then I threw everything else away. I am not a very sentimental person. I do not, not like to keep lots of stuff. My flatmate Beth, on the other hand, is quite a sentimental person. Um, she loves to keep stuff. She loves to, uh, she really struggles to throw stuff away. Even if she doesn't use it or it doesn't, or doesn't wear it or whatever, if it reminds her of something or something good, um, she really struggles straight away. We are two different, very different people. And I believe that most people fall into those two camps. Either you keep everything or you throw away most things. Um, and this has kind of become a bit of a phenomenon um, in the, in the um, global culture at the moment and so I thought we'd have a look at that today and see what um, yeah what God has to say about how we sort out our stuff and there's no shade in this if you're a keeper or a throwawayer uh, I don't mind um, it's completely up to you and it's really does personality type and, and how you were raised and blah, blah 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 but actually like I do think a lot of people fall into one of the two camps so We've all heard of Marie Condoing, I'm guessing, on Netflix. Um, it is, if you haven't, it's a series um, about a woman from South Korea who um, goes into people's homes and she um, helps them to declutter, basically. And uh, her whole thing, when you're sorting out stuff, when you're um, sorting out your clothes especially, is does it give you joy? And if it doesn't give you joy and it doesn't serve a purpose, then what's he doing in your house is basically her thing. She doesn't say it like that because she's a very sweet South Korean woman. But that's basically her thing. If it doesn't bring you joy and it doesn't isn't useful, what's it doing in your house? And I think that there is a Christian flip you could put on this. Of course I do, because I'm a Christian youth worker. And I think the Christian equivalent of this is does it bring you closer to God? And I'm not just talking about materialistic things here. I'm talking about um, our habits that we have, our... Um, emotional tendencies, our way of coping with things, all that kind of stuff. If it doesn't bring you closer to God, why is it in your life? In the same way that Marie Kondo, um, in, not, like that, not like that, in the same way with Marie Kondoing, Christians should look at all their stuff they have, they should almost like um, pull everything out like she does in her series where she pulls everything out, puts it on the bed, all the clothes, and you see how much rubbish really you have in your life. As Christians, we should really take an inventory of what we have going on in our life and the friends that we have, the um, the relationships that we have, the uh, the influences that we have over us, the stuff that we watch, the stuff that we read, the stuff that we listen to, the games that we play. We should look at all that stuff and think, does it bring me closer to God or further away? And there might be some stuff that you're like, oh, I don't really know. Like, I don't really know if that brings me closer to God or further away. And actually, so then it's when you sit down and you have a proper little think about it and think, well, if it does, if I don't know, then it goes in this pile and I'll, and I'll think about it. And it might be that you might later realise that, oh, actually, I, um, a lot of the time I will play Minecraft instead of spending time with God, or a lot of the time I will um, listen to that podcast instead of spending time with God, or watch that show instead of spending time with God. And, like, that's when you start to think, oh, maybe it brings me further away from God. And as harsh as, it, harsh as it sounds, if it doesn't bring us closer to God, we should really get rid of it. And it is harsh and it is hard. There are lots of things that we do in life um, for God that are hard. And getting rid of things that might, might make you happy in the short term, might make you um, enjoy life in the short term, but don't ultimately bring you closer to God is hard. It is a struggle. But God never told us that this would be easy. But I promise you that living a life that's pleasing to God is incredible. So what do we do 
when it's not easy? What do we do when it's a struggle? Because that's what God promises. Actually, if you live your life in this way, if you live your life thinking of only holding on to things that bring you closer to God, only uh, walking with people that bring you closer to God. And that doesn't mean they have to be Christian, by the way. Uh, sometimes Christians can take you further from God than anybody else. Actually, are these relationships good for you is a way of looking at it. Like, do they, um, and like a fancy word for it is edifying. Do they bring you your, your happiness deep down, not just on a superficial level? And if they don't, then get rid of them, cut them out. And actually, I really like what Billy Graham, uh, he was a famous preacher, uh, he says about this. He, this is my, like, a quote of his. God promises no easy life or days without troubles, trials, difficulties and temptations. He never promises that life will be perfect. He does not call his children to a playground. He calls his children to a battleground. And I think that's the thing about being a Christian, is that God is incredible. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, all-consuming. He, uh, he decides what time the sun rises and sets. He uh, makes sure the waves crash on the shore at a certain time, in a certain place. He is miraculous. He knows every single hair on your head, but he also created amazing mountains. Like, that is insane. But you can't half ass it with God. You can't give just half of your life to God. You can't be one foot in this Christian thing and one foot out of this Christian thing. God is a, an 100% God. He 100% gave everything for you. And all he wants is for us to try and give 100% back to him. And like I said, it's not easy. And like Billy Graham says, it's not a playground. It's a battleground. Life will be hard. You will lose friends and you will struggle and it will be, uh, it will be interesting to say the least. But if you live a life that is pleasing to God, if you try, because we all fail, like I'll hold my hands up, I fail as well. But if you live a life where you're trying to please God, where you're trying to go for what he wants you to go for in life, where you, where you live your life with the goal of it being pleasing to God, it will be miraculous too. You'll see things you never thought you could see. You'll hear things you never thought you could hear. You'll walk to places you never thought you could walk to. People will listen to you who you never thought could listen to you. God is incredible and he wants you to be incredible too. But the only way we do that is if we sort our stuff out and we don't, we don't have everything that keeps us away from God in our lives. And it isn't a thing that happens overnight. It's not like you go, oh, well, I've given my life to Jesus now. And um, so I guess I better throw away all this stuff and get rid of all these relationships and, and become a monk in the desert. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that actually, if you are wanting to live your life as pleasing to God, if you're wanting to come out of this upper room situation uh, in a being able to be empowered and fully live out that Holy Spirit life, then start to think about your friendships. Start to think about your relationships, start to think about your um, your habits, your hobbies, everything, and think, is this pleasing to God? And like, there are things that you might be like, oh, I don't know if this is pleasing to God, but actually like you giving your all to something and using the skills and talents he's given you, that's pleasing to God. You um, giving God glory for things that might not immediately seem like they're giving God glory, that's pleasing to God. Bringing God into situations where he's not normally is, that's pleasing to God. You don't have to uh, be a monk to please God. You don't have to throw away all, everything the world has to offer, but you do have to rank it in terms of importance. God's at the top and everything else comes underneath. And if anything else is getting above God, that's when you need to sort that stuff out. I'm looking forward to talking about this more later. Here come the questions.